This scripture deals with fasting, but I want I don't want us to deal to primarily look so much at the fasting part as what was going on with the people. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about the fasting, but we're gonna we're gonna uh, focus primarily on what was happening in the people at the time, or the leadership, if you will, at the time of this of this scripture. Let's pray, Father. I thank you for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. Without you, God, I'm nothing. Without your anointing. Nothing will go forward. I invite your spirit that's already in the house to touch these lips of clay, God, and let the word that you want to be spoken to come out to the people today, God. And we'll give you the glory, the praise, for all in Jesus' mighty name. The first part, few verses of this chapter, deals with Fasting for the wrong reasons. And the latter part's going to deal with doing it in the, in the right way. Now, I, I believe in fasting. I believe in seeking God. And I believe it's, it's a private thing. Uh, many people will boast. I'm going to go on a 40-day fast. Or I'm going to go on a two-week fast. I'm going to go on a week fast. Weak, weak fast. And you're going to find this year is, is where they were boasting. Fasting is something private. I really believe. Now I believe many times the church, the church or the leadership of the church, they call a fast within the congregation. And that we need to keep it within the church. As far as knowledge. If uh, Pastor David decides to call a, a, a church fast, then we need to, don't need to go outside these four walls of this church and broadcast to the public, hey, our church is on a fast and we're fasting for this. Amen? That's right. And so I, I believe it's a very, very, very private thing. I've I, I known people, you can call me out to it, that are, they've gone on, on a, a, a complete fast, no water, nothing, like three days, four days, whatever, or a week, whatever. And I, I know a man of God, I call his name, you probably know what I'm talking about. Well, uh, uh, it, it's not, it's not very, it's very common for him to go on like a 40 day fast. Now his 40 day fast may consist of one meal a day and that's it. And water, that's it. Some people, uh, Daniel had a fast. If you hear people talk about the Daniel fast. And the Daniel fast was he had no meat for 20, 21 days. He just ate vegetables. So there's different, different types of fast, but we want not so much the, the focus on that particular thing today. We're going to start with verse 1, and we'll go through as we can. He says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. It says, Yet they seek me daily, and they like to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the audiences of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and ye see not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and you take no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Verse 4. Behold, your fa your, you fast for strife and debate. And to smite with a fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard. <coughs> they were fasting for strife and contentions, and smite with a fist of wickedness means to use religion as an instrument for oppression. They were going about it in the wrong, they were fasting. They were religious leaders, if you will. But they had evil agenda behind it. They were doing it for the wrong reasons. They were doing it because the law said do it. But they had the wrong reasons behind of what, what they were doing. They were bringing suppression upon the people. They were putting the people into bondage. And our churches today will put people into bondage. Jesus come to set people free, praise God. Amen. 
Jesus is here to set you free and me free today, praise God. Jesus is here to keep us free in Him, glory to God. Amen. And we all face these issues. I've had issues this week. You've had issues this week. Amen. But God keeps us free from the oppression that the enemy will try to place upon us, praise God. And these leaders was fasting for the wrong reasons. They had hit the, like I say, hit the agenda. Pastor mentioned a lot of hit, hit the agenda. I preached a message one time about hit the agenda. The enemy. Lucifer. The serpent in the garden of Eden had, had hit the agenda when she went to Eve and said, this tree's okay. Look at the fruit. Look how nice it is. Smell of it. Taste it. And she bit into the apple or the fruit of that tree, if you will, of that time. And it, it caused uh, sin upon, upon the face of it. He had hit the agenda. His hidden the agenda was to take her and Adam out. And it worked. So there are people, there are religious leaders in churches today. They go through the form, they go through the motion, they do this, do that, the other. They go uh, uh, use certain scriptures and so forth. But it is, but the purpose behind it is to put pressure, if you will, Amen, to put bondage upon the people and to get the money. It's for the wrong reasons, and God. Was bringing it out. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. And God, through Isaiah, was telling the people that you got the wrong agenda. You got the wrong purpose behind it. In verse five, it says, "Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him?" Will you call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? The Holy Spirit is here, is probing, if you will, Isaiah, deep into the hypocrisy of Judah, of what was happening. I wrote a few notes down this morning, so I'm going back over this. And basically what God was saying, do you treat people... The same on Monday as you do on Sunday. Do we treat the people the same way tomorrow as we do today? Branch. There's a lot of people in church today with their smiles and how are you and, and, and very friendly and, and, and seem very spiritual. But tomorrow they'll curse, curse, curse you out. You got people in church today doing doing all the right things and this, that, and the other. It, let me call out. There's people on Facebook doing the same thing. They're saying the right things, but yet you know what kind of life that they're living. The hypocrisy of the people. And these first five verses of Isaiah in 58 was telling the people, listen, you're going on about it the wrong way. How are you treating the people today after the service? How, how are you treating the people Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday? Are you in it? We should not be any different tomorrow as we are today, praise God. Amen. Amen. I agree. Unfortunately, Amen. there's many people that would not guard the house of God today because they need to hurt of some religious leader or someone, a person in the church. Amen. That wasn't living right the day after the service was over. That's right. So many hurting people in the world today. And the people in the world are hurting even more because of what's going on in our economy for a while. Inflation went up over 7% last year. And Social Security went up 5.9%. A regress. But yet we as God's people that are on on a fixed income are still blessed today, praise God. Amen. Because God's got a way of giving an increase to what you already have, praise God. Mm -hmm. To make it go further, praise the Lord to God. To send you to the right store to get that deal that you need to get, Lord to God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. God says on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard all your workers.
Remember a few uh, weeks or so ago, I preached on the dry bones on a Thursday night, I believe it was. And remember the skeleton I had up here? It was about three foot tall or whatever, whatever it was. What God is saying is some, there are some people in churches today, if, you, if we could it see in the spirit world, if we could look beyond the fleshly eyes and see in the spirit world, that's how they look. Nothing but bones. But we're going to read a little bit later on that God's going to make you fat. And God's also telling them in Isaiah 58, the first five verses, your prayers are not being answered. Your prayers are not being answered because you are not living right or doing the right thing. How do we get our prayers answered? In verse 5, God asks this question. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? No. What was happening whether it was a fast or whatever it was it's a fast but what it was the sin was still left in their life. Yes. The sin was not being dispelled. The word of God will speak to you or I individually and if there's something that's not right in our heart and if we're honest with ourselves when the word of God goes forward amen it will ex expose it to you what is wrong, wrong and within you or within me that we can get it corrected but this fact that they were doing was not doing that because they had greed in their heart they were doing it in the wrong way they were going about it in the wrong way Yes. They were going for the form of God that's but denying the power thereof, if you will. They were going for the religious motions and blah, 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 and doing this, 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 and this. I heard, I heard a minister preach many, many, many years ago, and I, I may have shared it here, I can't remember. Um, and one particular service, God, he was praying for a breakthrough in his church, praying that God would do something miraculous and something mighty. And God directed him to bring a chair into the church, and he bought a chair into the church and set it up front. And that morning, he got everyone to come sit this year individually and prayed over each person. And the Spirit of God fell in the house, and God saved souls, God done miracles, and great and mighty things was accomplished, amen, because he listened and did what God said to do. Amen. But eventually, it got to the point in that particular church that they could not worship God unless the chair was in the church. So what happened? The chair became an idol. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. They still went through the same form and everything. People still came to sit in the chair. But it got to the point that they could not have a service unless the chair was in the church. We can have church today at this pulpit. We won't hear it, praise God. Exactly. We can have church today, a beautiful altar here. If that altar's not here, amen, we can still have an altar up here, glory to God. We thank God for this altar. We thank God for the altar over here, glory to God. We can have the church today at the piano one in the church. Amen. Come on. Amen. Thank God for the piano. Thank God for the drums we have over here. Thank God for all this stuff. Amen. We don't need this to have church, glory to God. We can have church today without the sound system, glory to God. Thank God for the sound system. When people have soft voices like mine, don't go very far, you know. Thank God for that. But when these things, these, these things that we have, the pul pul pulpit, the piano, the, the drums, and et cetera, et cetera, becomes and between you and God, it becomes an idol. Yeah. That's right. Thank God for all these things we have. But we worship a God and a true and a living God. Let's go on. Verse 6 says, 
Now this deals with true fasting and living the right way. If I don't can get through the, these next uh, six verses, six through twelve. When you go to a doctor, I believe in doctors. Amen. Doctor Jesus, number one. But I believe in going to medical doctors. Glory to God. I see one every three to four months. I take a certain amount of medication. Keeps me going. Praise God. Very, very, very low dose, very low dose low blood pressure pill. But every time I go to the doctor, my blood pressure is more than 115, 120, over about 70, 75. Good. When you go to the doctor and their doctor writes a prescription, you've got the flu, you've got pneumonia. Uh, you got COPD, you got high blood pressure, you got diabetes, whatever. The doctor writes a prescription. Now we know God can intervene and heal anybody at any time of any disease. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you have to follow the doctor's instructions to get well. Amen. Amen. Well, when you got an infection in your body, I got an infection in my thumb some years ago, my, my, my left, my right thumb here. I had to go to the doctor, I had to get it cut open and blah, blah, blah. And they put me on antibiotics. And you take it like five, ten days or whatever. You have to follow the instructions of the doctor, okay? If you follow the instructions of the doctor and do what he says, if you rest, uh, the doctor's report from my wife this past week was the rest. I mean, she gets up and walks to the house and she walks to the bathroom and this, step the other, and she walks in the living room, and that's fine. Okay, that, that's what his orders. No, no physical therapy at this point, okay. You follow the instructions of the doctor to get well. Well, these people were sick. And verses 6 through 12 gives the instruction from the doctor. Who are you talking about? God, the doctor. The instructions come from him on how to get well, how to do it the right way. And here we're going to find in verse 6, as we read here in, in verse 6, is not this the face that I've chosen. This is what God has chosen, to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heaven burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. You break every yoke. That's the purpose of doing this. Doing it the correct way. God says, I want every yoke broken. I want everyone set free. Amen. We all have to say it earlier. We all face stuff during the week and this, that, the other, blah, 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 blah. And sometimes if, if we just hold on to it, it weights us down. I'm not talking about sin stuff. I'm talking about stuff that, Things in general, things that's going on in your neighborhood, things that's going on at home, things that's going on in, on your job, and they, they begin to weight us down. The car breaks down. You got a thousand dollar car expense. This is weight, if you will, it puts on us. And God says, I want every yoke broken. That's God. Every yoke taken away. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens. In Matthew 23, 23, it says that Jesus called those who fasted for show hypocrites. Hypocrites. Verse 7 says, Is it not to deal with your bread to the hungry? And that you bring the poor who are cast out to your house. When you see the naked, that you have covered him, and then you hide not yourself from your own flesh. I, I want you to jump forward to, uh, to verse 11 in closing. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat your bones. 
and you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water. We fight the enemy every day. It's a full-time job for me to keep Larry Lilly straight. I don't have time to keep you straight. It's a full-time job to keep me straight. It's a full-time job for you to keep you straight. Yeah, we pray for one another and we encourage one another and, and, and we, uh, we uh, do everything we can to help one another. Yeah. But if I if I if I do everything in my power to keep me straight, then I'm doing good, praise God. We all deal with the work, the forces of darkness when you talked in Sunday school this morning. We all deal with the enemy day in and day out. Amen. Every day. From the time we get up in the morning to the time we go to bed at night. And even someone shared in Sunday school this morning about a dream they had last night. And it was just the works of darkness trying to discourage them, if you will. We all deal with this. And so we, what we do, it, it, he says, listen. Keep it ourselves straight. <clears throat> because if I come in here with an attitude, how can I help you? I can't. If I come in here because I'm upset with somebody, how can I help you? I've got to get that stuff straight first. We're here to help one another and build each other up in Christ. And that's what this scripture is. He said, I'll make you fat, if you will, praise God. Amen. If we look at everyone in here physically, everyone in here is very, very healthy. I don't think anyone in here is lacking food or anyone in here is hungry today. Because God has blessed us, praise God. But unfortunately, many people are starving themselves spiritually to death. God, help us. We want to feed you. This here is steak. Amen. This here is baked potato drizzled with butter. Glory. This here is rice and beef and chicken. Glory. Glory. This here, amen, was cause your soul to become fat. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because, see, if we're not feeding the soul the right foods, it's like our, our, our natural bodies. If we don't feed the right foods, eventually you begin to lose weight little by little by little by little by little until, amen, you get to the point you can't even walk. You can't even get out of bed because you have deprived the body of the food. We have to feed our souls the proper food, glory to God, and do it the proper amen. thing, amen, in amen. order for it to have the meat, if you will, the fat upon it that it needs, amen, to survive in order, amen, to help somebody else that's in worse shape than you and I are. Yeah. Amen. That's what Isaiah was saying. If you do it the right way, the proper way, your prayers will be answered. God will hear you and answer you and answer myself, praise God. And their prayers weren't being answered because they were, uh, they, they were going about it the wrong way. They were going through the religious motions and this, that, the other. Amen. God is far from it. God won't listen or hearing them, if you will. And I thank God. I, I believe you and I. I want to be in a church that hears God. Glory. Glory. <clears throat> I want to be in a church, amen, that knows God. I want to be in a church where His Spirit is present. I want to be in a place where the Spirit is moving on me, praise God. Hallelujah. That touches the inner being, being of Larry Lilly, glory to God. Thank you, thank you. And we're there, praise God. Glory. God help us to make ourselves fit in Christ. Yes. God help us to do what God has called us to do, to stay in His will. And yes, uh, in, the, in the two years that I've been in the ministry, we've seen the struggles. 
And we've seen the growth. Amen. We've seen the growth. Growing pains, if you will. I remember growing up sometimes when I was a kid, my legs would hurt so bad. Mom just said, it's just growing pains. You just grow. I don't know you remember that way back that, that far or not, but I remember. And, and, and we have gone through growing pains. But guess what? You're still here. And I'm still here, glory to God. Amen. And God still moved. God even saved a soul Thursday night here, praise God. Amen. In the tabernacle. God is still doing great things and will continue to do great things, glory to God. Yes. We just have to stay on track. And the very beginning, I made a comment. Living the same today as you, as you do tomorrow. Don't live any different when you're away from the church as you are in church. Doing what God has called you to do. God loves you. Hallelujah. God cares about you. He loves you so much. He, he numbered every hair on your head. There ain't no, I mean, my hair's getting thin, but it, it's no way you can count every hair on my head. And there's no way I can count yours either. Some's got less than I do. I still couldn't count every hair on your head. But God has it down to the exact number of hair on your head. And a God that would go to that detail, yes, he cares about what you're going through. Glory. He cares about what you're facing. He, he understands the disappointments in your life and my life. And he'll make it right. Yes. In Jesus' name. Pastor. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Larry Lilly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. We all need to get fat in the Father. We all need To want more of the Father in our lives. So thankful for a great crowd, a good crowd here today. Thank you, Pastor Larry Lilly, for preaching the Word of God from Isaiah chapter 58 and what God is doing here in Lewiston, Woodville, North Carolina. Wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to wish you all, I don't know all over the world if they do it, but here in the United States, tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and we just want to wish everyone a happy, happy Valentine's Day. We love you, and the Father loves you. We love you, and the Father loves you. And that's what matters. And when you know someone loves you, you don't have to, to doubt it for a moment. You can, you see by their actions and what they do. Praise the Lord. And we love you all over the world. In Jamaica. In Kenya, Africa. Tanzania, Africa. Kenya. Over in Nigeria. Pakistan and India. Over in Indonesia, Mexico, woo, Romania, Australia. We have friends in all these countries that I'm naming. And, and it's 50 countries, 50 nations we're in for the last five years. And God has just been so good to us here. We love you. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you Thursday night live at... Um, about 8, 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time Thursday night. Have a great one. God bless you.